What's up everyone? So I waited to put my review for Stampede out because this is going to be a spoiler review and I wanted more folks to have the opportunity to check it out. Now with that being said, my embargo has been lifted and we are gonna get right to business folks. So One Piece Stampede is a fire ass film and out of the recent big anime releases here in the West, I have this sitting at a tie with the My Hero movie for top spot. This is the first One Piece movie I have been able to see at the time of release with the rest of the fandom since completing my One Piece journey and it did not let me down. It was a spectacle from start to finish and managed to pack all the aspects I love about the series into a feature film. So let's break it down. Uh, first I wanted to discuss the plot. Now the plot of the movie is by no means rocket science but it works for what the movie needs. The two antagonists, Buena Festa and Douglas Bullet, have teamed up to create a special Pirates Expo, inviting all the strongest pirates with the intention of having Bullet kill them all and become the next Pirate King. Now before I go any further, I just want to say that the two special filler episodes were not necessary and are not necessary to watch in order to enjoy the movie. They add a little context and a couple fodder characters specific to those episodes, but it's not anything plot breaking. So continuing on, the simplicity of the plot allows the movie to get straight to business. The pirates arrive, are told this is a competition for Gold Rogers treasure, and then everyone is immediately plunged into chaos. I mean, literally nobody even got off the ship before shit gets crazy a few minutes in, and Douglas Bullet start beating people to a bloody pulp. Now while still speaking on the plot, it's amazing how even though the movie does not fit within the canonical timeline, Oda still makes it so that these new antagonists, their backstories and motivations fit seamlessly into the story. For example, the stage for the film is set two years prior where we see that Douglas Bullet was actually released from Impel Down by Blackbeard during the prison break. Then we find out Douglas Bullet was one of the Roger Pirates and we get his backstory and motivations. And after learning what's driving Buena Festa, it's all pretty good writing showing the widespread effect Gold Roger had on the world that this many years later, these two guys would team up to tear down different specific pieces of his legacy. Now it's all great stuff and doesn't mock the intelligence of the fans and actually makes Stampede something worth watching. Next, I wanted to bring up the world of One Piece, or rather the characters that inhabit this world. For a 20th anniversary film, they sure as hell came out swinging and made sure to remind everyone in the theater why they love One Piece. The character development for this ridiculously large cast has been so great that no matter who showed up on screen, whether it was Law, Fujitora, Cavendish, Bartolomeo, or whoever else, I was excited as hell. This wasn't just a Luffy fest and unlike other anime that have thrown their supporting cast into the trash for mind-numbing fan service, that doesn't happen here. An appreciation for the journey that has been unfolding over the last 20 years is given its due respect. As far as the animation is concerned, it is explosive and dynamic. It's animated in the same style that made the Broly film the spectacle it was. This works out well here since the whole movie is a slugfest. Now the CGI used for Bullet's final form was also well done and not jarring at all. It actually meshed well with the rest of the film. Now, to be honest, I had already expected the animation to be S tier, so the quality level that they delivered wasn't surprising. Okay, so this is the part of the review where I wanted to talk about my favorite moments from Stampede. First, the epic hockey clash between Luffy and Bullet. Not only was the animation crazy during this segment, it also cemented just how powerful Luffy has become over his journey with a back and forth struggle that reminded me of the final Gohan and Cell beam struggle. Next, the fight between Zoro and Fujitora. Now I was already hyped from the snippet when the trailer dropped, so I was flipping shit when the battle went down. The best part of the fight was Fujitora casually summoning a meteor to take out Zoro which he was able to slice in half but not completely eliminate the threat. Then Mihawk decimates the meteor's remnants with low diff, showing how wide the skill gap is still between the two. Next was the huge role that Usopp played in the film. Now Usopp has to be one of the greatest characters in anime ever. Even though he's a coward, he will always put his neck on the line for his captain. 
This man was beaten to a pulp by Bullet and still got back up on his feet. And if we really want to talk about it, Usopp was the reason they were able to defeat Bullet. He carried a bloody Luffy on his back to get him out of harm's way, made sure Luffy was treated by Chopper first, and his projectiles opened Bullet up for defeat in the end. His moment apologizing to Luffy for being weak and Luffy's response to those words are reasons I say the series has some of the best character development around. That scene was super emotional and impactful for the viewer. Now finally, the final punch. The build up for that Gomu Gomu no King, King, King. It had me and a few other people in the theater jumping out of our seats. Honorable mentions for other top moments was Hancock popping off and showing off and the illusion of Ace that Sabo had Anne create as the Straw Hots were sailing off. That had me in my feelings. Now obviously there are a ton of other crazy moments in the film, but I'm not going to go through them all since this isn't a recap but a review. For sure though, Oda made sure several people had big moments during the film and allowed them to share the spotlight with Luffy, which again is much appreciated. Now for this part of the review, I just had a couple of discussion tidbits surrounding some of the stuff from the movie I found interesting. First, I wanted to talk about how as the series and lore progresses, we see more and more of how beastly the members of Roger's crew were. Douglas Bullet was an absolute monster and it was said during the film that his strength was equal to Ray Lee in his youth, but it was said he could have been stronger at the present time. It's impressive that Luffy was able to hold his own against someone of that caliber, but obviously the defeat of Bullet does not mean that Luffy is stronger than Ray Lee, since taking down Bullet was a massive joint effort. Still, Luffy showed out and is clearly inching closer to his goal of being Pirate King. Next, I wanted to talk about the continued parallels between Roger and Luffy. Now when Sabo shows up toward the end, he mentions to Buena Festa how Luffy has the ability to get the most unlikely people to team up in a time of need. This reminds me of the recent flashback we had surrounding the Rocks Pirates and how Roger and his crew teamed up with Garp and the Marines in order to take them down. I also wanted to circle back again to the fact that Bullet was one of the Roger Pirates and even with that monster as part of his crew, they still needed to team up with the Marines in order to take down rocks. I can only imagine what kind of heat he had on his side. Now back to the whole Roger and Luffy connection, in the end credits, when we see a member of Roger's crew show him the eternal pose that created, he's visibly upset, saying the person that finds the treasure wouldn't be the kind of person that would use such a thing. This is directly linking to Luffy smashing it in his hands in order to keep Luchi, Crocodile, or whoever else from getting their hands on it. Not gonna lie, even though that was obviously going to be Luffy's move, I definitely hit a face palm since the One Piece was right in his grasp. Also, while speaking on the Eternal Pose, on it was written in English, Laugh Tale, which is clearly the romanization of Raftel. Interesting enough, even though Laugh Tale is written on the post, the subtitles during the film continue to refer to it as Raft Tale. We know that the language and the characters are speaking in One Piece is English, but why Oda has waited until now to correct it to Laugh Tale, I'm not sure. Obviously, Raft Tale can easily be dissected to Laugh Tale due to Japanese dialect, but still it's a bit strange, I'm not even gonna lie. Um, really weird name for the final island, but then again, One Piece is weird as a whole, so it still fits. Now, before I wrap up this review, I wanted to ask those of you that saw the movie, how do you think things would have gone down if Kizuru and maybe even Akainu had joined the fight? Definitely something dope to think about. Anyway, overall, this movie is a must watch. So for those of you that didn't have theaters nearby, once it's available to stream, you should definitely hop on that. If you did see it, what did you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Now, as always, like, subscribe, follow me on all my socials at Yubai Roshi, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Check out the merch store. The link to that is down below and consider becoming a patron if you would. I would greatly appreciate it. But that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys have a great day and I will catch you guys next time.